Okay, so sometimes when you are, we're talking about customer service, the customer isn't there when you do the work and they've left, the neighbors left you in and, or the keys have been left and you need now need to telephone the customer to explain to them what is going on. You just need to make sure that you're prepared with a very concise and simple explanation for them over the telephone. It's more difficult to explain what's going on with their heating or air conditioning problem when you're trying to describe it on the phone than when they're there and you can point out and show and they can ask questions and see what's happening. So just make sure that it, before you use the telephone that you're prepared to speak with them. Many times you may be at the house and the wife is home and the husband is at work and she wants you to call the husband at work and explain things as well. So again, make sure that you are prepared, understand what you want to tell the customer and make it short and succinct. Okay, so remember I talked earlier about customers. Uh, they've been without heating or cooling all night. They're either freezing or they're dying of heat. They are upset. The kids have been up all night. They haven't slept and who knows what else is going on in their life. Just make it, and you know, you, you've done this, you know, five times today. You're on your sixth call and this is Friday. So it's your 42nd call of the week and the 42nd customer that's uncomfortable and wants to bend your ear a little bit about what's going on. Just remember that uh, this is the only, one of the only times that this happens with them. They're not familiar with it. So just understand where they're coming from. Listen to what they have to say. Tell them you understand and um, do the, and reassure them that you're going to get them taken care of as quickly as possible. Of course, you need to be friendly. Again, on that 40-second call of the day when it's 102 degrees outside, it's very hard to do that. It's part of your job, so make sure that you prepare yourself before you go into the house to be friendly and and understanding of what's happening. Also, if if they've had problems and this is the first time that you've been to the customer, don't badmouth the other company. Just be professional. You don't have to badmouth any other company if you're professional and take care of the customer. They'll know without you telling them. It takes a, it takes a little bit of um, counseling ability to be a, an HVAC technician unlike most other trades. So you need to be able to listen and sometimes they want to tell you about the last time their air conditioner broke. You need to be courteous and listen as quickly and, and then and then move on to getting your job done as quickly as possible. We'll have some exercises on this in, in just after these video lessons for you to uh, do a little bit of role playing here. Uh, again, if you've had a bad day and the customer's having a bad day, don't share yours. Just listen and move on. If they if the customer mentions something that you know is incorrect, again, it's just be courteous and and as nice as possible so that you can get to the task at hand and reassure them that you know you're gonna you really need to get going and get this taken care of so you can get them comfortable. All right, and then going the extra mile, that just that bodes well for you and your company. And in this example would be ch checking or changing an air filter gives you a chance to uh, see what the condition is. It, it, it doesn't have to be one that you bring with you. It could be one they have next to their their air handling unit and that you notice that theirs is dirty and just ask if you want to change it. And it's a good time to talk about maintenance. Uh, examining their thermostat and asking them about uh, their comfort in their home is another way to to show concern and it's not really to impress but it's just to show your your professionalism and here's the thing that um, a lot of technicians have trouble and that is a technician as a salesperson again I could spend a week on this and take selling out of everything and, and show you how to how to make this work for you but it's not really selling it is just being professional for example um, when you go to a customer's home, you don't need to tell them how good you are, how good your company is, or what other additional services to to sell. It's just about being professional, knowing your job, knowing your 
the options and presenting those options to the customer so that they can make an informed decision on what they'd like to do. And here it talks about handling service calls and that they can be broken down into three parts. There's really more than three parts because I like to think about the preparation before you pull in, go up to the house and then the greeting of the customer. Then it is asking those questions to have them tell you what has been going on, explaining to them what you're going to do and how the service call is going to work from start to finish. So you tell them, first I'll diagnose, then I'm going to give you your diagnosis. I may come up with a couple different options for you to, to take care of your system. Be, and I will give you the price up front before I do any work. Then you do the service. And then you explain to, to the customer the situation and give them, give them their bill, collect their money, ask them if they have any questions and move on. Again, I could spend a week on a, the service systems process, but this is it boiled down in a nutshell. So when you get in there, you know, you need to make sure that you don't park in their driveway and that when you knock on the door that you step back away so that you're not right up in their face because sometimes they can't see who's out there and make sure that you introduce yourself and listen. They're going to want to tell you a whole lot more than you want to hear, but you just need to listen and be friendly. Should have shoe covers in your hand. It's interesting. The uh, One of the cable companies did some videos on their cable company service calls. And what they noticed was when their technician stepped into the customer's home, almost every wife in the house looked down at their feet to see if their feet were, were dirty. So if you have your shoe covers in your hands and you are introducing yourself, you will um, reassure that customer that you aren't going to be traipsing in dirt. The other thing is if you look down and you see shoes neatly stacked next to the front door you know they take their shoes off in their home so if you don't have shoe covers you better make sure you take your shoes off as well the other thing is be prepared for them to say oh that's not necessary and you need to have your answer to them as to why you're going to put your shoe covers on anyway this is really important it seems like a pain in the butt and something pretty trivial but this is extremely important Okay, so then again, you solve your their problem, and we're going to learn how to do that over the course of the next many, many months. And the one thing that you do need to be able to do is explain what you have found to the customer in layman's terms. You don't want to use technical terms, and then they, when they glaze over because they don't understand you, you need to come up with those terms to explain what's happening simply and and I always relate it to automobiles because everyone understands those and then you also need to give them their upfront pricing and options before you do any work get their customer approval ask them if they have any questions and then you need to present the maintenance and any follow-up visits that you may have to perform and once the work is complete you pack everything up and you always leave the equipment running and and just before you walk out the door ask them what they'd like their thermostat set to or if or if they would like their system turned off but make sure that you show to them that the system is running all right so that is it for the customer service portion of of the lesson and then we'll get on to some video video type role playing so I'll explain the situation to you and then you'll go ahead and write the what you would do in that situation in as an assignment